So on today's episode of how badly can one person mess up their own motorcycle? Not really, but I like to do my own maintenance. So breakdown here is of the things you need. You need your service manual if you have one. You need to open it to the page on sinking the throttle bodies right here. Most importantly you need your coffee. Uh, creamer if you use creamer. And then the next important tool is going to be the synchronizer. So I went to the authorized dealer for this uh, purchase because um, me personally, I don't trust Amazon or eBay, even if they are cheaper, minimally cheaper, um, that I'm going to get the actual manufacturer's products. So I go straight to the... If I can't go straight to the manufacturer in this case, I didn't want to because they're not in this country. So I went to their website and found their authorized dealer and contacted them. They did in ha indeed have it in stock. So I went ahead and purchased it from them. This bad boy is what I'm going to use to synchronize my throttle bodies. It's called the Carb Pro Tune. It's made by uh, Morgan Carburetor or Carb Tune LTD. Here's the destructions. Okay. So that is what I'm going to use. Go install these little guys. And then, you know, I do have another um, carb synchronizer, but uh, I use it on my V Star. It's this one and it's sufficient. I didn't want to use it on the MT09 because it's just a little bit more advanced. Uh, do yourself a favor, favor though, I imagine I would just go ahead and get the quality one, but uh, I already made this purchase before I discovered I can sync my own throttle bodies, so that's why I got the uh, Pro Tune. So next item on the agenda, remove the gas tank. Not completely, I'm just going to rotate it this time. It looks like it's possible. Um, actually uh, I don't do many shout outs just because I have a goldfish memory and I don't remember <laughs> people's names but uh, gentleman put a comment on um, on the video I did about um, checking my air filter uh, mr. old guy riding on YouTube I do follow him if you want to check out my subscriptions he is on there um, he mentioned about rotating the gas tank and I'm like you know what? I didn't even try because I was doing it by myself and I didn't I was more worried about dropping my gas tank but he mentioned about uh, sinking his throttle bodies and I'm like oh you know what I hadn't even thought about that it is one of the things they um, re you know put under the service manual as for per um, peri periodic maintenance so I'm like I looked into it further and sure enough it is something me myself you out there ever want to do you can just uh, get yourself a good synchronizer I also will add um, as far as motorcycle um, channels videos bloggers bloggers that um, 
I do follow, I don't follow too many big ones anymore, just because I got tired of being, uh, I don't know, it just seems like sometimes they get so big, they, uh, they take on all these products that uh, maybe they don't really, uh, think are good products, and, but they're still going to try and sell them to you, and I, and I don't appreciate that. So mostly I, I follow little moto vloggers channels like myself and uh, I like that we share it ideas and tips and all that stuff and that's what I uh, that's what I uh, so those are the kind of accounts I follow I think the biggest one on there I follow is Fortnite and Shaytree um, and those are just entertaining ones they're um, not necessarily trying to sell you anything but um so yeah definitely check out my uh, subscription is is available you can view my subscription on my page um, of all the different um, smaller moto vloggers um, ones that come to mind are um, oh god now I can't remember any of them <laughs> this is why I don't shout them out but a uh, yammy rider or yammy yari I think his name is uh, and there's a whole bunch of guys that uh, started uh, YouTube uh, videos that I ride with sometimes on group rides on Tonnet. Check those guys out. They got a lot of uh, interesting uh, content. A lot of fast boy riding, too. Um, and then, oh gosh, I am totally having a brain fart. Some guys in different countries also. So anyway, it's all there on my page on my YouTube channel. I think it's on the About page or wherever you go on your if you look at youtube on your computer or on your phone you can view the subscribers i subscribe to all right all right so what we got going on here is the cartoon pro needs to be set up before i do this it comes with four 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 of these hoses um obviously for um the m209 i'm only going to need three comes with these little uh, screw-on adapters for if you have that on your engine you're gonna use those but the MT-09 isn't gonna need these you do have to put a dampener in so this they provided this little tube you're gonna cut it into four pieces um, I'm only gonna need three of the pieces again because of my bike and then insert them cut about four inches up insert them here and then that's gonna be um, this is where you're going to plug it in to the outlet on the engine side and the, that side is going to go to um, the carb tuner. Okay, So it's about three inches long. So I'm going to just cut it in half and then cut it in half, those uh, two pieces in half, using my very cheap ruler I found in the garage. I'm going to mark the middle ish and then I'm just going to cut it in half. And then I'm going to cut my half again. All right. Holding on to three of those, then I believe it's four inches, but I'm going to double check. Okay, got four inches marked.
I'm going to do these at the same time, so hopefully I get the same amount in. Yep, feels like it. So I don't know if you can tell, but the restrictor or dampener. Weedy bitty bitty hole. All right, the dampener is installed. Again, this is going to go into the engine part. We're going to plug it into the ports on the engine. And then the other end is going to go into the carb tune. You see, that's those are the uh, monitors that you're going to see go up and down slightly, and when you need to make adjustments. So, yeah, this is ready. Now I got to uh, tear apart the bike again. Okay, so this panel right here has some, um, well, you'll see. I don't know what to call them. I'm just going to wiggle it off. See how that pushes in? I think you can see that. So it's just the pin here, push pin. And uh, I already took that pin off because it's there anyway, so. And same, same on the other side. And so far, this is all done with four millimeter. Of course, the little push ones. You just, I just use the pointy end to push in the little pin.
By the way, I already broke them loose. There were, <laughs> I didn't reinstall them this loose. But you never know. See, that's what I like. That's a good point right there. That's what I like about uh, doing your own work. You know if uh, it was done right. Not if somebody left off a part, putting something back together or tightening something. This is just little eight millimeter bolts. So these are the shortest hoses underneath the tank. These are the ones, the only ones I'm going to disconnect. Alright, there you go. Tank's on backwards. <laughs> kind of odd looking, eh? So, um, I'm going to relay an incident that happened. Not to me, but to a friend. Um, I think they call these air breather hoses or whatever. So, guy took in his bike to the dealership he purchased the bike from to have his 600 mile service. Um, this is a sad story. He got his bike back with some scratches. Um, not only that, but I'm pretty sure from his description of the problem he experienced after getting the bike back, they either forgot or didn't tighten up one of these breather hoses. And the guy was smelling gas, oil, just a whole bunch of sensory overload that he never had before on this bike. Um, kind of sad. He took it to uh, professionals. And they can't even plug in simple hoses. So again, further reason why I kind of like to do, if I can, the work myself. But, uh, you know, hopefully that will happen to the next customer. And hopefully that technician who they gave this the job to to do a 600 mile service was made aware not to let that happen again. It just sucks because instead of the... Uh, Service manager saying, oh, you just overfilled the tank. That's why you're smelling gas. You know, he had to go search for the uh, real reason by talking to other associates there. But the service manager, manu manager says, oh, you overfilled it. And then when he pushed them further, they're like, no, 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 that's not, that's not what happened from what I heard. And then he says, oh, yeah, they, they uh, one of the lines or something. Anyway, some bullshit like that, so. You know, buyer beware. Anyway, when I do take my bike in, it's going to be a Yamaha dealer. Um, I'm not going to mess with the uh, place I bought the bike from. I do have a Yamaha dealer to me um, over in Pasadena. Okay, so after you got your uh, tank turned around backwards, I went ahead and uh, disconnected. Not disconnected, actually. I just slid out of its slot the ECU uh, you don't want to disconnect it for the, what we're doing I, I don't believe you do anyway um, I'm not a mechanic <laughs> I'm just following the instructions in my book and uh, from what I've seen online for this ECU you just lift up there's a little ledge ledge right there you just lift it up and then you can just slide out the ECU um, and then little guy here is your uh, intake air temperature sensor and 
you're just going to want to lift it up and move it aside. Now if I hadn't already done clean my air filter, I would unscrew all these uh, screws here and get to the air filter and clean it, but I already did that, so it's not necessary. But I do need to remove these screws from these holes, which I already did. Uh, it's just, uh, I believe, five millimeters. And then there's going to be four of them that you're going to remove. And it's going to loosen this up. Now the hard part is the air filter, uh, the tubes there that connect. I still have no idea how I'm going to get to those. It's the little uh, air, air filter case clamps. Ugh. You can see them better right there. So I gotta disconnect all three somehow. I'm gonna try the easiest one first. It looks like it's the closest to me with a basic four millimeter Allen. It might be too long. Don't know that I have any shorter ones. So sometimes you gotta get creative with these things. All right, so once you loosen up those clamps, <sighs> um, you got one more hose to disconnect, and that's that one. It is your cylinder head breather hose. All right, with the help of some pliers, getting off the clamp, that has been disconnected. We'll put our air box to the side. All right. This is what I need access to. Where are the little, let's see if I can find one. I think I gotta move that harness. Get you a shot of where we're gonna connect these, but it's so deep under there that no matter what angle I try, I can't get you a uh, clear shot. But you'll see what I mean. I did cover up my, uh, Throttle bodies there because, you know, don't want to take any chances. Um, those are going to be where I'm going to make my adjustments. That one, that one, and the other one over there. That's what they look like. That's what I got to remove. <sighs> I want to see what my bruise looks like. I'm dropping my bike. Yikes. It's still pretty swollen. There you go. Looks like this they have this one marked. So maybe that's gonna be my um the one I'm gonna go off on uh all the other readings. It's my baseline. Here's the little guy that came off. Sorry about my Broken nails, that's what happens when you work on motorcycles. You don't even uh, need to take off the little uh, clasp right there. It, uh, it's not necessary, you just gotta wiggle it off. And that's where I'm gonna connect the uh, synchronizer. One of them at least. All right, now that the service hose caps are removed, you can see one there. I don't know if you can see the other one. It's in a really crappy place. But yeah, let's get them connected. Alright, as you can see, you got the hoses connected to the service ports. Number two is probably the most uh, difficult to get to. But uh, we got it done. Had to disconnect a uh, switch and a couple hoses just to be able to remove that cap and then uh, install the hose for the uh, uh, carb sinker.
So now that I've synced the throttle to the best of my abilities, who's going to come over and put this back together for me? More importantly, put those annoying little horribly located caps back on. Urgh. Rest assured, it definitely was easier putting on the caps and the uh, clamps than it was to take them off. So don't forget to uh, put your sensor back on. Don't let it get stuck underneath the, uh, the air filter like it did for me before you start bolting things down. And we're just going to make sure these wires are slipped into the little slots for them. And then get the tank back on. We good. All back together. Another project completed.